Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here with something that was requested by a viewer a couple of weeks ago. In this video, I'll be taking you through the settings on your Yaesu FTDX10 to optimize your single sideband operations. Now, as a caveat, everyone has a different voice, are using different microphones, and are in different operating conditions and environments. There is no single set of settings that will universally be optimum for everyone. The settings I'll be showing you are, after a lot of research and experimentation, what I found works best for me. However, I will let you know why I set certain things in certain ways so that you can easily modify the settings for your own voice, microphone, and operating style. In short, it's kind of a balancing act. Please leave any questions, concerns, corrections, or just general remarks in the comments section below. Really? What do you think? On the front panel, we've got a couple selections we can make. Right here, you have your NB or noise blanker. Selecting that will knock down any repetitive, spiky noise. For example, automotive ignition noise so this is a very good setting to have if you're going mobile with your rig. Now we're going to turn that off. I'm going to digital noise reduction and I'm going to select that and if you press it again you can then use your function knob to adjust from 15 down to 1. I like leaving mine around 6 but if you're having a lot of noise on the band if you punch that button and adjust it you can virtually remove noise in the background the rig is intelligent enough to know what's noise and what signal over here we have our notch and our contour I'm going to select notch and you can see right up here I've got a nice notch there down here the center knob will let you adjust your notch and below it we'll just turn that off and turn on the contour and the outer knob adjusts that. That's a little bit wider and a little bit shallower. And you can use both of them. So adjust your center knob for the notch, your outer knob for the contour. So that gives you a way to knock down two dim sources of noise that are happening. This knob up here is your shift and width. First, we're going to do the center knob, which is your shift. So you can see I'm moving my band up and down so if you have anything just on the lower end, you could tweak it up a little bit and knock that out. The other thing that we have up here is the width. So I can expand it out to 4,000 and take it all the way down to 300. A good bandwidth is either 27 or 2,800 hertz. Now for the next couple of settings, if you look up in the upper right hand corner, there's a tag and clicking that tag will take you to a video about everything that your outer tuning notch will do. Right now, I have it set and selected to, to do my level. So you see as I'm adjusting my level, my background is disappearing, leaving only the signals that I'm interested in. I can also select clarifier and tune this. So my received clarifier, this is adjusting my received signal. And I've got, we'll turn that off and go to transmit. This is adjusting my transmit signal. Very handy for quick and dirty, fast changes. You can also click both of them. And this is adjusting my root frequency. So finally on the front panel, but not really, it's in the display. We're going to look at these four settings. The attenuator, if you've got a really powerful signal, you can knock the entire band down by 6 dB, 12 dB, or 18 dB. I leave mine off, but sometimes when it's just a little too overwhelming, a little attenuation is good. Your IPO is your intercept point optimization. And in that, you have several settings. IPO is just a straight shot through. And these all apply to the entire band. You also have the selection of amp one, which is running it through a single amplifier stage. And that's going to give you approximately 10 dB of amplification across the entire band. Amp two 
runs it through two amplifier stages, giving you approximately 20 dB of amplification across the entire band. On your IPO, you want to leave it with no amplification, or you can go ahead and add amp 1 for HF. If you go up to 10 meters or 6 meters, you can go ahead and hit amp 2 as well. I leave mine off generally unless I need it. Your receive filter, you have several options. You can go narrow band, which is, you can see, adjusted down here. You can go 3 kilohertz. That's where we'll leave it because that's the bandwidth that we're looking for in this video. And you can go across 12 kilohertz if you need to. But we'll put it back on 3 kilohertz. AGC has multiple. You can turn your AGC off. You can go to auto. You can also go to fast, mid, or slow. In the next part of the video, we're going to be looking at the AGC levels. And my recommendation is to leave them on the factory defaults and set this to auto. Then, depending on the mode you go into, the rig is smart enough to know which AGC it should select. So that's something that you can set on auto, leave in the defaults when we get to the menu settings, and let the rig do the work. All of the settings I'm presenting here will be listed in the video description along with a chapters list to make it easier for you to review parts of the video you might want to rewatch. As I mentioned before, these are settings that I found work best for me. Use them as a ballpark figure to start with and play with them to get what's best for you. If you're enjoying this so far or maybe even learning something new, please take a moment to pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I would really like that. We're going to come down here to our radio settings. We want to be in mode SSB. And let me pop up here to the top. And we're going to come down until we see the AGC levels. AGC fast is set for 300 milliseconds. AGC mid is set for one second. And AGC slow is set for th three seconds. Your transmit bandpass filter. If you're working DX or doing a contest, you probably want that at this 300 to 2700. If you're doing regular rag chew, then 200 to 2800 is good. Now that we have these numbers selected, 200 and 2800, we're going to come up here to our high cut and low cut frequency. And you see, I got my low cut set at 200 hertz. I've got my high cut set at 2800 hertz. And I've got a pretty mild roll-off on those at 6 dB per octave. Now we're going to back out of here. We're going to go to our operational settings. And we want to be in TX Audio. The AMC mic release time is mid. Your rig's DSP has three equalizers. Each of them has a frequency, a level, and a bandwidth. In my case, I've set my parametric equalizer 1 frequency to 300 hertz. That is the center frequency of this equalizer band. I have asked it to attenuate that signal at 10 dB and I've got a bandwidth of 5. My equalizer 2 is set at 1.2 kilohertz. It's being attenuated by 5 and it's got a bandwidth of 5. Finally, our high level Equalizer 3 is 2300 hertz. We are amplifying that by 7 and maintaining our bandwidth of 5. Next set of settings, we've got the P parametric equalizer. The P indicates processing and these are what is active if you've got your voice processor turned on. The previous ones up here, just the parametrics, if you've got your voice processor turned off, that is what applies. In our first processor parametric, we are 300 hertz, amplification of 5 dB, and a bandwidth of 2. Our equalizer 2 is centered on 1300 hertz, has a amplification of 2, and a bandwidth of 2. Our high audio frequency equalizer 3 
centered on 2400 hertz with an amplification of 10 and a bandwidth of 1. Now we're going to get out of here and we're going to start taking a look up here. The first thing you want to do is adjust your monitor level. I've currently got it turned off. And if you're using a speaker, then you want to have this turned off. You will get feedback through your microphone, and I'm not going to show you that, but just be aware of that. If you've got headsets, you can adjust it to on, and I like to keep mine in the 30 to 35 range. For now, we'll just turn it off. Next, we're going to go to our mic gain. You want to select your ALC meter, and I've got the mic gain connected to the function here and I'm going to talk into my microphone. By the way, the best way to talk is over the microphone two to three inches away from your face in a normal tone of voice. And we're going to see what this does to our ALC. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. And see if I turn it all the way down, I'm losing my ALC because I'm, I'm too low. And if I turn it up, there, be, there comes a point where it's not going to crank anymore. I find somewhere between 45 and 55 is good, so I'll just leave it right in the middle of that. Next is our mic equalizer, and that turns on the parametric equalizers. The processing level next to it, if I turn it off, then I'm using the normal equalizer settings, the first ones. If I turn it on, then I'm using the voice processor equalizer settings that we have. I recommend having it set between 45 and 55. Start at 50 and adjust up and down. Again, use your ALC. Test, test, one, two, three, four, five. That's a good number on the ALC meter. The AMC level, that's really interesting. I've got mine set at 50, and that's where I'd recommend you start at least. And what the AMC does, that is the automatic microphone gain, and that limits the mic audio to prevent distortion, even if too much audio is set too hot. This way the rig is going to prevent you from sounding like a trucker on an overpowered CB. And by the way, all of this was done using a dummy load. I just picked up a new dummy load. It's a 300 watt dry dummy load MFJ model 260C. And I'll put a link down in the video description. Uh, I found it on Amazon. It's a pretty good price and no shipping costs, so there's that. Part of my research involved watching videos from other creators. I was very surprised to find that there were only a handful of them on YouTube. That makes this subject on this radio a bit of a rarity. So please help me get the word out about this and other videos of mine by sharing. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. With your friends in the ham radio community especially in your local radio club and on social media. I'm back on the antenna now, and I'm going to press my function button. We're going to go here to record. When I hit record, what I'm playing out there will record. So it's got heating elements and a fan. And you know, it's certainly here, and so there's, there's no spot that doesn't get the hot air on it. But yeah, they're pretty good, and they're small and more convenient. The other thing that's convenient is the uh, convection hot plate. You know, I think it was like 49 bucks or something. So there's somebody having a nice QSO. Plug that in and nothing gets hot. And I'm going to turn the sound down. We're going to click on stop. Come here to play. And you see that on that frequency, I recorded for 32 seconds. And you can play it back. You know, it's, got, it's a mini convection. So we'll stop that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And we'll go back, back into our functions. And I'm going to just make a couple very short recordings. We'll turn this up. And stop it. And record. And stop. And record. 
and stop. Now we'll turn the sound down and we're going to go to play. So you can see I now have those three recorded. The first one was 11 seconds, then 4 seconds, then 3 seconds. But you can play them back individually. And the limit on how long you can record is based on how big your SD card is. So we'll just go ahead and delete these three. I'm going to go back on the dummy load. And we're going to go to our function. We're going to press on message. So we press memory, select a place, and start recording. CQ, 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 CQ. November Delta 3 November ND3N. November Delta 3 November calling CQ and standing by. Now I can press the one button. CQ, 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 CQ. November Delta 3 November ND3N. November Delta 3 November calling CQ and standing by. So that's that recorded. Now I'm going to show you a different way of recording. And we're going to actually just get out of here and be on this screen. And everything I just did on the screen, you can do on the remote control unit, which is the Yesu FH2. I picked this up at Ham Radio Outlet. So I'm going to press Memory, select Location 2, hit my mic, and give a brag sheet. Radio here is a FTDX10 running 30 watts to a MFJ dummy load. And if I wasn't running into the dummy load, I'd be going into a Gap Challenger DX. I can also use the remote, and I can play back first message one. CQ, 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 CQ. November Delta 3 November, ND3N. November Delta 3 November, calling CQ and standing by. And message two. Radio here is a FTDX10 running 30 watts to a MFJ dummy load. And if I wasn't running into the dummy load, I'd be going into a Gap Challenger DX. Real useful little tool, and you can use it on the fly if you need to. You've got a total of five memories. Each one can be up to 90 seconds long. But you say, what, what good is that if I'm not actually transmitting? So I've got the two messages. So I'm going to go back here to function. I'm going to turn my break in on. Usually that's a CW thing, but I'm going to turn break in on and watch for the transmit. And we'll just go back here with my brag sheet again. And you see I am Radio transmitting. Is a FTDX10 running 30 watts to a MFJ dummy load. And if I wasn't running into the dummy load, I'd be going into a Gap Challenger DX. And that's recording and playback of a message. In an upcoming video, I'll be giving this same treatment to the CW mode. Please remember to comment, like, share, and again, please consider subscribing to this channel. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. As always, I'm at your service. This has been a Ham Shack Chat. I'm Tom, ND3N, just like it says on the hat, and I am out of here. You're one sexy man.